In this video, I'm going to share with you exactly how I went from struggling freelancer to earning 50k per month as a solopreneur and hopefully give you a realistic roadmap to help you do the same. I'm going to be as honest with you as possible about how I got to this point because the last thing that I want to do is make this look easy. But I do want to show you that this is possible for you because believe me when I say that I am really nothing special. If I can do this, you can absolutely do the same. And while my experience is starting as a web designer, if you're anyone trying to build a business online, the five lessons that I'm going to share with you in this video are going to be just as important for you in your own business journey. So we're going to go straight back to December 2020 and I'm going to walk you through getting my first clients, hitting my first 10k month and then all the ups and downs that eventually led to me hitting my first 50k month in February of 2024. So the quickest way to get from zero to 10k per month is to pick a high income skill and then start offering a service and so I picked web design. I had already spent a couple of years as a freelance designer, but I made the decision that I wanted to stop random freelancing jobs and go all in on web design services. And so I found some other web designers and I spent weeks going through their websites, their offers, their social media, their freebies. And in some ways this was really helpful because it allowed me to put together a website with a clear offer. And it also gave me the confidence to start putting myself out there on social media because I had done enough research, felt like I was prepared and I knew what I was talking about. But at the same time, spending all this time looking at other people left me with a list of doubts. Am I unique enough? Is my offer good enough? Would anyone even pay this much to work with me? How can I compete with all these other web designers when I barely even have a portfolio? All of these doubts kept me stuck in the planning stage, scared to put myself out there. But after four months or so of this, eventually I had done all the research and planning that I could possibly do and I just had to take the plunge. And so I launched my website. If you compared it to the other designers that I was studying, it was really nothing special. I had two very basic portfolio projects, one page websites that I built for my sister's personal training business and one that I built for a family friend with an architecture business. Then I just had a very basic services page with two packages listed, one brand identity and one full brand and website package. So getting clear on my packages and what was included is what gave me the confidence to put myself out there and start posting videos on TikTok to promote myself. I wasn't even directly posting about my services, I was just sharing my expertise. Anything that I was learning about web design that I thought my audience would like and it would help them, I would just post this. You can even go back to my TikTok and check out some of my first videos. It wasn't polished or confident, there was no real strategy and the videos were not that great. But this is where I learned my first lesson. Just getting visible is 80% of the work. In the time that you spent obsessing over your sales page, your product, your offer suite, your email sequence. Someone way less talented than you has already put themselves out there, launched their offer and is already making 10K a month. As soon as I started putting myself out there, posting TikTok videos, solving my clients' problems, within three months by March of 2021, I already had more inquiries than I could handle and I was booked out three months in advance. Having one clear service that people actually need and then just getting visible and putting yourself in front of people is more than enough to book those first clients. Even talking to these clients on those first sales calls, they all said something along the lines of, I've been thinking I need to update my website for so long. Then I came across your video. I really liked your vibe. And so I reached out. Simple as that. I didn't need to have the perfect offer, the perfect website, the perfect portfolio, or even the perfect content. The video that convinced most of my clients to work with me wasn't even any of the videos that I'd spent three hours scripting, editing, and posting. It was actually a quick 20 second video that I just did on the spur of the moment, throwing it out there to see what would happen, never thinking that anyone would ever see it. The only advantage I had in this moment over every other web designer out there was that I was visible to these people at the right moment with a solution to to the problem that they were having. We often overthink these things, especially when you're just starting out, you're spending a lot of time researching other businesses similar to yours and comparing yourself. And that's when the imposter syndrome really kicks in. But the truth is more than likely your audience don't even know where to start looking for a service like yours. They're just looking for someone that they can trust. They haven't done the same level of research you have, and they're probably just sat there feeling overwhelmed. So making it really easy for them, getting in front of them with a really clear, valuable offer is enough 
enough to get those first clients. And if you're confused about how to put together this offer, how to structure your website or your sales page, and what kind of videos you should be posting to get those first clients, these are all things that I cover in a lot of detail in this series right here. So when you're finished with this video, make sure to check that out. So as soon as I got over my overthinking and started putting content out there, the clients started coming. And so after posting consistently for around three weeks, I had a video do well and suddenly I had 17 new inquiries in my inbox. From these first inquiries, I got my first five clients and quickly found myself booked out for the next three months. And this was enough for me to have my first 10K month, booking in two clients at $5,000 for a full brand and web design service. But the thing that I quickly learned is that it's one thing to hit a milestone like this, and it's another thing completely to keep doing it consistently, which led me to maybe the hardest lesson that I've had to learn in my business journey so far. Sustainability is far better than intensity. The first mistake I made when I started getting all these clients was booking out all of my time with client work and leaving no time to work on my own business, which meant that once I started getting into these client projects, it took up all of my time and I completely stopped posting content. The main form of marketing for my business was gone. And so when I was done with these client projects, I felt like I was starting from scratch again, hustling to get the next round of clients. And honestly, I kept going like this for the first year or two in my business. These cycles of going really hard to get clients, booking out for three months and then burning out and having to take a break before doing it all over again. And it came from this fear of never saying no. I couldn't turn down any work for fear that you have to grab every opportunity because you never know where your next client is coming from. But when you own a business, you have to make sure you're leaving time to work on your own business and you have to stay consistent with the things that build leverage and compound over time. For example, posting content and growing an audience builds leverage to grow your business in the long term. I can now go months without posting and it's still bringing in clients and sales because I have consistently invested in this and it now feeds my business. So you have to make sure that you're always leaving time for your own business, not trying to book out every single second of your day to make the most money right now. Even if this means taking on fewer clients at a time and seeing slower growth in the short term so that you can be more consistent in the long term. And that was a lesson that I really had to learn the hard way. And the other thing that kept me struggling to be consistent and actually grow my business was lesson number three. There are a hundred different ways to build a business that work, but not all of them are going to work for you. So once I was successfully booking clients and was able to have a few consistent months, this 10K per month mark is actually where you're working the hardest in your business. Your time is filled up with client work. There is no more time in your day for more clients. And it's at this point that you realize that to grow from here, you have to find a way to scale your income while working less. And so you have three different options. Option one is to build an agency. The traditional agency model is where you hire full-time employees and do everything in-house. The second option is to stay as a solopreneur but productize your services to leverage your income. So for example, you increase the value of your offer and decrease the time that it takes to deliver done-for-you services. For example, website in a day. The second option is done-with-you services like strategy sessions or consulting. And then lastly, you have do-it-yourself options like digital products or website templates. And then last up, you have the hybrid business business model where you're technically a solopreneur with no full-time employees, but you outsource your work to multiple freelancers. This is what most people do now because it's the most sustainable way of building out an agency because you can slowly start to outsource different tasks as you grow demand from your clients without the pressure of huge overhead expenses from full-time employees. And so there are pros and cons to each of these different business models. And you're probably waiting for me to tell you which of these is going to be the best option that's going to make you the most amount of money. I get a lot of messages all the time from people asking agency or freelance, do you think I should offer this service or this service? But these are not questions that I can answer for you. There are a hundred different ways to make money online. Most of them work, but not all of them are going to work for you. The last thing you want to do is build up an agency to 50k per month and then realize that all you've done is create another version of a nine to five that you hate. The best business structure is actually going to be the one that plays to your strengths and that you actually enjoy. And this is what's going to make it sustainable enough for you to actually see success. So how do you figure out which one is going to be best for you? Well, if you're in the beginning stages of your
your business right now, this isn't a question that you have to answer right away. You wanna keep your business really simple and straightforward. Focus on building a really good service and then serving your audience. Make sure you stay open and try a bunch of different things so that when you're ready to scale, you already know the things that you like and the things that you're good at. And then at this point, you can slowly start to filter out or delegate the tasks that drain you and focus more on the tasks that give you energy and that you really excel at. You wanna keep an open mind going into this because you're likely gonna be surprised about what you find out about yourself as you build your business. Four years ago, as an introvert that hated the sound of their own voice, I would never in a million of years thought that I would be here making content like this for you right now. When I first started my business, I had the idea that I wanted to build an agency. I only started making content because I knew I needed to attract clients. And so once these clients started coming in and I had more than I can handle, I began outsourcing my website builds pretty early on. The third client that I worked with, I designed their website and then I brought on a developer I knew to build it for me. What I quickly realized was that this took away the one thing that I actually liked in my business. Instead of just sitting down and getting stuck into building a website, which I really enjoy, I was spending all my time going back and forth with the developer and speaking to my client. Also, I'm an introvert, so I have zero social energy for managing a team and I very quickly realized that I didn't actually want to build an agency at all. So instead I chose the path of a solopreneur but even after realizing this is what I wanted to do it took a while for me to know exactly what I wanted this to look like and how I was going to scale my income doing this. I took a bunch of different courses to learn how to offer website in a day services, how to sell website templates, how to offer one-to-one -one website audits and strategy sessions. You can get really excited when someone tells tells you that you can charge two to three thousand dollars to build out a website in a day. I was looking at other designers who offered this service and was earning upwards of 25k a month from just two days of work a week. But in reality when I tried this I hated it. I found it so draining, I didn't enjoy it and it just wasn't sustainable for me. While it worked for someone else it was never going to work for my own business. Eventually I worked out the things that I love the most about my business are making content like this and teaching about things that I'm excited about and working one-to-one -one with a very select few clients that I really connect with on projects that I enjoy. And so eventually I chose to scale my business selling digital products, which allows me to do the thing that I enjoy making content and also gives me the freedom to work with a very small number of high ticket client projects that really energize me. And so the one thing that I really want you to know is that there's no right or wrong way to build your business. I absolutely believe that you can build a business that gives you the exact lifestyle that you want for yourself without compromising or doing something someone else's way because they told you that this is the only way to grow your business. This was a huge mindset block that I had to overcome. At some point you have to stop looking around at what everyone else is doing. Stop waiting for someone else to tell you how you should be doing things and trust yourself and what you want for your own business. I knew deep down what I wanted for my business for a long time before I actually decided to go all in and pursue it. It seemed too ambitious, too unrealistic. I was scared to put all my eggs in one basket and so instead I spent a lot of time trying to slowly diversify my income with a lot of different things at once. And this left me feeling very stuck in my business for a very long time because it is impossible to grow if you are focusing on too many things. And so lesson number four, diversification is a distraction. While it is very good to try a bunch of different things early on, once you figure out what you want your business to look like, you have to start saying no to absolutely everything that doesn't align with that. And this is a scary thing to do, which is why a lot of people get stuck and fail to scale their business past a certain point because they're scared to say no to anything and really commit to the one thing that's going to grow their business. So for me to actually see significant progress in growing my business, I had to get really clear on what I wanted and then focus 100% of my energy on that. And so after two years of going back and forth, this is what I did. In March of 2023, I cut my client work right down. I said no to a lot of people and I went all in on trying to grow my audience, my YouTube and my digital products. And for the next six months, I felt like I was back at zero again. Absolutely nothing was happening. I got to the point where I thought, what am I even doing? This is never gonna work. I was about to give up, admit that I made a mistake and just go back to working with clients. But at every point in my business where I have reached this point of almost giving up, the next week or even the next day, I have had the biggest wins in my business so far. And true enough, the next week, I had my first successful digital product launch and made made $2,000 in the first week and then since then have grown this to consistent five-figure months. So now I have the freedom to make content like this while slowly starting to take on more clients again, only working
working on the projects that I really enjoy and I'm excited to work on. A lot of you here have been following me and you've seen how I've grown my YouTube audience to over 20,000 subscribers in just three months and it appeared as if it just happened overnight but as you've seen in this video it took four years of relentless hard work to get to this point with months of slow or zero progress sometimes even going backwards and starting from scratch and so the last and most important lesson is the only secret is to not give up. If you stick with anything long enough, there is absolutely no way you cannot win. The only reason I got to this point is because I just kept going the longest when other people would have given up. I truly believe that I am nothing special. And so if I can do it, you can absolutely do the same. You can create your own business exactly the way you want it to look. No compromises if you just stick with it the longest. And so if you're looking for a roadmap to follow with everything that I know that's going to help you take your business from zero to 10K per month and beyond, then I have an entire playlist for you to binge right here.